Champ TV. Happy Live Nations Friday. Lucy Goosey edition of the program. I'm Jeff. Tom is here. He's hiding on the interwebs. He'll be in the frame here soon enough. Director Matthew from afar on Twitter. It's at Jay Cameron Show. Today's show pre recorded. Mm, such a bummer. I used to ignore the FCC rules on this and never tell you if it was pre recorded. Just so you know, I duped you guys in years past. Um, but that's because I didn't know the rule. I plead ignorance. I didn't know I was supposed to tell you that uh, we weren't live. Even if the show was live an hour before you're listening to it, 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 I still have to tell you. So there you go. I wish, I wish we'd go back to the old way of doing things, Tom. Now they could, we couldn't do it because they can see that I'm not in the studio. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe we'll do a couple of live ditties from the, the hizzy over the next couple of months anyway. Well, Probably not March because that's spring camp. You want to be in the studio. But in the summertime, you know, if we're moving around, bouncing around, doing some things. We're in different parts of the region. That's the beautiful thing about technology. It used to be really hard, man, yeah. to, be able to yeah. pull that off. And now with technology, it's like if only I could have told the radio version of you and me 13 years ago, 14 years ago when I started in this gig, you'd just log onto your computer and there you'd be. You'd say, that's crazy. You need an ISDN drop, Tom. We have to have an ISDN drop to make this thing work. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, frequently inconsistent. Yeah. So it was very frustrating for me because I would watch a panicked you scramble to try to make sure that things were working right. And for people that don't know, it's hard to do a good broadcast and stay locked in when you're watching your producer scramble. Because you know something's amiss. Well, and, and that's the only thought that is repeated in your mind. Yeah, and I'm saying, Internet Jesus, take the wheel, you know, because <laughs> I, I can't do anything about bandwidth. There's nothing I can do about that. Yeah. And in the old days with AJs, you just pray that they didn't get a fax from three to six. <laughs> you, I forgot about that. We were hooked into the fax line. Yeah, we were hooked into the fax line. So you're just thinking, don't get a, yeah, don't get a fax. You know, I yesterday on the show, I talked about the negative aspects of aging is that you overreact, you overcorrect uh, correct when something goes wrong. If you drop something or something bumps into you, like that's the first sign I've noticed really of aging that, and I don't jump as high as I used to besides those two things. Um, but the other byproduct of aging that is sad is that of course, uh, as you get older, the people you knew die. Now I'm not bringing us all down on a libations Friday, but you brought up AJ's and AJ's is no more. Yeah. And uh, I would also note that uh, it's just a sh quick shout out and an acknowledgement of Ed, who used to be the bartender there. He's passed on. Uh, I found that out recently that uh, unfortunately he passed away. But Ed was he was like Norm from Cheers or he was like uh, Sam Malone from Cheers. He was that bartender. He, he, tall, ex-basketball player. I know in Cheers it was ex-baseball player, but he would talk sports with you for hours and hours. This is before you came along, Tom. Yeah, I don't remember him. Yeah, he was fantastic. He was the guy. There are people of a certain age who are listening to this just nodding their head right now. Ed was a fixture. He was the guy. Uh, he moved to Jacksonville, and uh, that, that was the end of the Ed era at AJ's. But that was a golden era of AJ's. And it does make me sad that Ed has passed and that AJ's is no more. I was driving down Tennessee Street recently, and I looked over to the spot where AJ's used to be. And it is no more, and it just breaks my heart. That was a real fixture here for a very long time. I hope I get an email or a social reply to this question because there was another bartender not too far from AJ's back in the day who was always a delight. He worked at the old B-dubs, the old school. It's now a different establishment. But then it was the varsity for like five minutes. Yeah, for five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did shows there on a Friday. You had trouble on one of those Fridays. At the I Hulk remember it. Yes, very yeah. much so. But there was a bar tent. That was a great setup for a bar over yeah. there. And uh, this guy was a Steelers fan. He's probably 5'8", five, 5'9", five, but he was there forever. Always had a smile on his face and was the nicest guy in the world. I don't yeah. remember his name, but if you were of my era or before, because he'd been there a while, let me know that my man, the Steelers fan, is okay. I just want to know. Somebody's out there like, oh, I know that guy. He's, He's doing great. He's down in Palm Springs now. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, please right. somebody send send me some good juju. Let me know that that guy's all right. Well, you do. You root for it because bartenders are special people. Well, they can be. 
They can be, and they're important. And uh, I, we've said, you and I, if we leave this business, we're opening a bar. We're going to do it. We're going to open a bar together where you can gamble. We'll take bets at the bar yeah. because it'll be legal by then. And it'll be outstanding. It'll be fun. People will come in like, oh, I'm going to go up and see Cameron and Lang, make some bets, drink a few beers, enjoy their delicious whatever we cook. What would you <laughs> – yeah. <laughs> no, I would just cut a deal with the best pizza place in town that, you know yeah. – <laughs> Kind of, there it we're, is. So, we're the bookies at the end of the bar. <laughs> what would you call the, the, the establishment? Would you call it bookies? That would be one hell oh, of a Oh, that'd be bar. fantastic. Who wouldn't want to stop in bookies? Oh, man. Yeah, I like it. I think we did it. I think we just did it. And then the menu is just different, like, names of bets. So you got the exact the parlay, the, the executive. The parlay. Yes. <laughs> the the three-team teaser pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> Quintella. <laughs> be like, I'll, I think I'll have the money line. Um, that would be great. Yeah. I would love that. We should do it. Bookies. Any I'm investors like out there, we'll be your front men if you want to make this happen. Let's open a bar called Bookies. At least once a week, Tom and I will be there to bartend and make bets with everybody. And then uh, we'll all prosper. Free drinks for bets. That's it. So you have to stick around. You have to, buy, you have, to have an active ticket going. But then we have wagers on whatever. Live wagers for drinks. That's how you get your specials. And next week, we will be looking into these wagers as it is Super Bowl week next week. Not today, unfortunately. Yeah. It is next week. I can't. I will do this. Here's a football subject that I did not realize was going to touch a nerve. But this morning on Twitter, I found out otherwise. So I don't know if you saw this story, Tom, but we're both fascinated by the broadcast industry because we work in the broadcast industry. But see, oh. oh. see. What? I think I know where you're going with this story. CBS and Romo, did you hear yes. this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about that? They flew to Dallas to talk to him about how much he sucks these days? Okay. That, in short, the headline is basically telling you that they flew to Dallas to tell him, you're not any good. Let's get it together. But here's my point. Have you seen somebody go from the level of excellence that he was in year one yep. to where he is now? So quickly, it's embarrassed. What happened, Tony? Okay. okay, so I actually have an answer for this. I've oh. got, I've got a decent answer, and you're gonna, you're gonna make a face when I tell you why. But every once in a while, when I'm driving home, I will listen to the Mad Dog because we're done at three o'clock. Yep, there it is. There's the face. Here's why. Here's why because he has information about the business. Yeah, okay. that very few others do. And so he was on a rant about something else. Then he says, and Romo will never shut up. I can never enjoy anything. He'll never shut up. And he said, why don't you start prepping for these games instead of blatant chips all the damn day? You're not doing your damn job. Everybody knows it. So apparently, if you reach the upper levels of the TV industry, he let it slip that it's well known that Tony doesn't prep for his gigs. That's and he's correct. Focused on playing golf, which I find hilarious. Because you're getting paid $18 million a year. I know yeah, it's not Tom Brady TV money, but it's 10 years, $180 million. He was good at it for a few years. He decided, screw this. I can wing it. I'm just going to golf all day. So that is correct. Um, and it's interesting. A couple of people have noted this, that he stopped the, the, the keen insight that he was most known for, right? He predicted plays. They told him to stop predicting plays. They should not have told him to stop predicting plays. It does not give anybody an advantage that is down on the field. Stop doing that. Let them man predict the plays. It was awesome. Wow. He would come to the line of scrimmage and he would play the role of, or he would, he would wait till they came to the line of scrimmage and he would play the role of quarterback. You're in the booth because you were a starting NFL quarterback. You're in the booth because you were a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys that made the playoffs and you at one time played at a very high level. I mean, I know you never won a Super Bowl, but he played at a high level. He did. He was a good player for a while. His ability to convey to the viewer what he, the quarterback was seeing from the defense and then what they were in formationally and his options based on that coverage was Excellent insight. That is the very definition of color analysis. That is what you do. You've got to give us something we can't, we don't know. You got to tell us something that we're maybe not processing the way you would as a former NFL quarterback. Also, you can see the safeties, and those of us at home cannot see the safeties because yep. the camera angle sucks. 
So because you were a quarterback and because you can see the safeties, which is everything to reading a defense, then that insight is greatly appreciated. He went from doing that, telling us why the quarterback is going to check to what he's going to check to, what he thinks the play is, what the chances of that play are of having success based on the look they're getting and the personnel they have, which is the very thing you desperately want from a color commentator to being a fanboy who just cheers Josh Allen and, and, uh, and all the other quarterbacks. That's what he does now. He's, oh, he's amazing. Oh, Jim, look at that, Jim. Oh, this is amazing. That's all he does. He doesn't do anything that he used to do. They failed. If that is true, if they told him to dumb it down, if they told him to stop doing that, and I had multiple people respond to a comment I made about this on Twitter, and, and they all seem to say the same thing. So maybe they read this somewhere. I don't know. Or maybe they heard the same show you did. But he doesn't sound prepared. He sounds like a fan, and he doesn't tell me anything anymore. Well, this is a waste of time. Right. Well, and, and here's another reason that I believe that information on that show was solid is because, and this I, do, I never listen to, but Phil Sims joins that show for a half an hour on Fridays. And who does Phil Sims have an ax to grind with? Right. Obviously, Tony Romo. That, that was the guy who replaced him. So Phil would know, and he still works at CBS. He would get the inside dope, and people would say, oh, Phil, you were so much better. Tony, the, what he's devolved into, you and Nance you know, were never this bad. It's because clearly he stopped caring, which is just kind of crazy because now you have to ask yourself the question if you're a TV executive moving forward, are we going to have guaranteed deals or are we going to have performance-based renewals? Yeah. We're signing these guys. Like, what if Tom Brady is awful? Not a stretch to think that he will be in the booth for Fox. 10 years, $375 million? <laughs> Is that fully guaranteed like a Major League Baseball contract? Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. I... You know, they had to have, my guess is, Tom, and I think it's a fairly good guess, they did a dry run with Tom Brady. There's no chance they just said, whenever you leave the game, we're going to give you the money without ever having heard you broadcast. I, I Here's why I have pause there. Maybe it's because they've learned a lesson at Fox, but Drew Brees was hired off the street, and so was Jason Witten. And Jason Witten was stuck in the Monday night booth and Drew Brees was going to be the heir apparent on Sunday. And they stuck him on Notre Dame broadcasts along with studio responsibilities for NBC. Neither of those guys lasted very long in those gigs, but the networks didn't want the other network to grab the guy. It's nuts because Jason Witten may have been the worst broadcaster in the history of broadcasting. And that is saying something. I mean, my goodness gracious, gracious, Jason Witten was a stick in the mud. I mean, he, uh, that was the worst thing I've ever heard. Everybody focused on Booger McFarland using cliches and being in the mobile that was down, down on, on the field. field. They screwed Booger, by the way, had him down there in that impossible situation. Witten, Witten was on another level, man. Witten is on another level of what are you talking about? Years ago, I used to, Matt Millar and I, I used to talk about this all the time because when Eric Dickerson was the on field reporter, buddy. That's a special kind of comedy. I mean, e Eric Dickerson was so bad. You don't remember this, right? No, no, I don't. So Dickerson used to always wear this leather jacket, which was hilarious for a lot of reasons. But anyhow, he would always have this leather jacket on, and he would say, this is how he would commentate. Uh, they would throw it down to him, and he'd be like, thanks, guys. You know, earlier today, I talked with Emmett Smith, and he said, Eric, you know what I think is going to happen tonight? <laughs> But that's what he would do every time. And then, like, later in the game, they'd go, what do you think they're trying to accomplish by using this timeout? Well, I talked with Coach Landry earlier in the day, and he said, Eric, I think when we get late, <laughs> that he did it every single time. It was fantastic. Oh, uh, I miss it. They fired him pretty quickly. But he couldn't stop it. Hey, what happened to Lynn Swan? Did he just get fired? He, he wasn't was any good either, but. Uh, he moved it along, though. He, he it's okay if the sideline reporter moves it along. You don't have to be great. You just got to move it, move the discussion, and not become an anchor to the discussion. Like, there were times, I know you didn't like him, but the late Tony Saragusa, there were times when Goose actually advanced the broadcast from the sideline. He got better later. Yes. Early in his career, he was just a buffoon, a fat buffoon. And then, there, yes, there were times when it was like they toss it back to the booth, and I 
Kenny Albert, I, I rarely feel bad for him, but in that situation, I'm like, where do you go? Like, yeah. do you just ignore it? And Kenny would. He, it, it would be Goose would say, and that's why you got to do it. These beefy guys. Dead silence. Second and six. And I'm like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I do. That's what yeah. I do. I'd probably yeah. just go to the next play. Uh, yeah, there's nothing you can do to play off of that. It's, it's all, I will just say this. Like, I think, and I, this is going to sound like I'm sucking up to him because he's a, a friend uh, and he's a knoll. But I'm not. I really think Tom Block does a good job because he only hits the button to add something yeah. to what they're saying. So it's if they're speculating about what just happened or about an injury or about whatever the reason for something that just happened, Tom does a good job of like weighing in saying, well, guys, I just heard coach so-and-so say, and then boom, tells us what the F happened. Yep. That's good. That's what you're supposed to do there. He'll even uh, chime in to do a spot of the ball, which is critical because you're down on the sideline. You can kind of see when there's a judgment call going one way or the yeah. other. Or I going, think he's short here, Gene. Or, yeah. yeah replay officials uh, when they're discussing. Like, so that's a tough situation for any broadcast crew to, to string that out. So if you're Cole Hain and William in the booth and we have an ACC official replay review, which is going to take four and a half to five minutes, now you could have the discussion on the sideline. Oh, they've got their notebooks out, like little details like that, which mean that the play is going to change. It helps. It helps greatly if you can have somebody who is not, again, an anchor to the discussion. And we all know who those folks are when, and, and it could be male or female, doesn't matter. And then they you throw it down there and you realize, oh, God. This See, is I think bad. years ago, uh, and they've gotten better with this, it's still not great. To me, this is the easiest mandate in the world for that job. You have to further the discussion. You have to provide insight to something that can't be gleaned from the booth. Yep. It can't be that you're asking a coach as he jogs off the field what they're going to do about the 21-point deficit. It, it can't be that. And too often it is that, and you see the coaches get annoyed as they're trying to get into the locker room and address their team. It, it can't be that. And that's also the truck, though. The truck is telling them to ask the questions that they have to ask. That's not like something that you think of on the spot. When it, Now, when, as your cloud increases, you can go and, and do as you wish. But I agree with you. The other thing I'd say about sideline reporting is the idea of making it a human interest story angle is annoying. It's annoying because it always bleeds into the next play. There's never enough time created. If you're going to do a sideline reporter who, when we come back from break, is going to tell you why this is an emotional day – for the fullback making a start because his grandmother is in the stands. You can't give them such a short period of time that the ball has been snapped. And the play is happening. There's an explosive play down the field. Yeah, correct. 20 plus yards. And that happens all the time. So it can't be about that. It, you're, it has to be what you're talking about. And one quick thing I'd say, just because I brought up Kenny Albert and Tony Saragusa, the other guy in that booth for a long time was Daryl Moose Johnson, who still works with Fox. <laughs> He is the marvel of the NFL broadcasting industry that that dude who took that many serious hits as a fullback, as a fullback beyond what Aikman took. Yeah. This guy was a fullback in the nineties is still really good at his job on Sunday. He's sharp. I just listened to a long form interview with him. He was fantastic. Instant recall of every starter for both teams and the games that he called this year involving both the Eagles yes. and the Chiefs. So he's being asked questions about the matchup, and he's able to instantly recall the starting right guard and the nose tackle for the other and, and, and the matchups that are going to be pivotal for the game because he does prep and he does care. Yes. Obviously, he he understands that there's there's a level of professionalism you have to have. It's an honor. I mean, I think he looks at the game uh, in a very respectful manner and then consequently does a job in which he is thoroughly prepared because he respects the players and the game and the coaches and the fans that much. When you wing it the way that Tony Romo is now doing, it's disrespectful to your audience and to the players and to the coaches involved in the game. Well, and to a lifer now, I mean, Daryl last played how long ago? 25 years ago? It's a long time ago now, yeah. That's a long broadcasting career. That guy will never get the number one chair because he wasn't a quarterback or because or whatever reason. It's just not a sexy enough. Yeah, no, no, he's pretty, yeah. 
And he's yeah, he's kind of bland in his delivery too, and that doesn't help him. That's exactly the reason. But he's prepared as hell for every broadcast. It was like uh, the big offensive lineman who they stuck with Dick Stockton. That dude was always prepared. Uh, it was a deal. But um, those guys will never get the number one chair, and you owe it to them. You owe it to them as well because they're the ones that carry this whole you know thing for twenty years before you get there, and they're the ones that when they retire, they're 75, 80 years old, and they made a, a huge career choice out of this you arrive out of nowhere because you're the dallas cowboys starting quarterback and he was great to begin but i guess that was only maybe you you mentioned this a lot too the natural instincts of just coming off the field make you a stronger analyst out the gate so it's without question yeah makes me appreciate troy aikman all the more i know i mentioned him earlier in the week but troy still very much cares about the gig and he is prepared to go does he make simplistic and weird comments from time to time yeah but He's always prepared. He's you could tell he's prepped. Yeah, he's prepped. And I would final thing ribbon on the commentary about broadcasting. Here's the deal: if you're a broadcaster, whether you're a color analyst, play-by-play announcer, sports talk radio host, whatever it is, if you're a broadcaster of any kind, coming to the understanding, and for listeners to understand this too, nobody is everybody's cup of tea. There's there's stylistically, there's nobody universally beloved. I mean, it's crazy to me. I mean, I, the other day I was criticizing Al Michaels. I did so because Al Michaels is arguably the greatest play-by-play announcer in the history of sports. He's on the short list of people that you would include in that discussion. I was amazed at how many people think that Al Michaels sucks. Al Michaels sucks now, yeah. but Al Michaels was incredible for 35 years, 40 years. If we could be half as good at what we do at 75, 80 plus years oh old. Oh my God, it's amazing. But he has been a curmudgeon y brat. Oh, it's over. It's over. The, it, it's over. And I hate it. Everybody reaches the end at some point. Yeah. And, you know, it's clear that he's at the end. I just hope somebody cares enough about him to say, Al, you live in a gorgeous home in California. You play Pebble Beach weekly. Go do that. Go, go, <laughs> go do that. And let's call it a day. You've earned it. Thanks. Here's your golden parachute. Have a good one. Um, Because I don't like it when they let guys choose to leave on their own time when the product is suffering because it's just such a – it's how we end up remembering them. Like Keith Jackson was really good at what he did for a long time until he became an a-hole and angry all the time. And then you're like, that's all I remember about Keith Jackson. Oddly enough, we're actually kind of in a dark age of of NFL – uh, number one broadcast. Yeah, they're going the way of the dodo. It's ending. Well, because Tarico and Collinsworth have no chemistry whatsoever. Tarico tries too hard, and Collinsworth doesn't accept him. And Tarico's a fantastic play-by-play guy, one of the best in the game. Yes, he is. But that just boot that boot doesn't work. Romo's mailing it in. Greg Olson's fine. I think he's good. Perfect. I like Greg Olson. He's fine. There are times when he, it, it sounds ridiculous some of the things that he says but he, he he efforts he tries hard and he knows the game and he knows the game Burkhart's fine but they like Burkhart and then they stuff Troy and 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 Joe on Monday nights and they're probably the best they're probably the best left but when you're talking Sundays like there aren't many crews where you're like oh thank god we got this crew calling in when I was growing up if you got summer all in Madden if you Ooh. got if you got a young Kenny Albert if you had Dick Enberg calling your game Dick Enberg was fantastic Yes, yes. Now it's um, what's his name who does everything? Uh, he does Westwood One Monday nights. Kevin Harlan. Kevin, Kevin Harlan's Harlan. great. Outside of that, you're kind of reaching. Kevin Harlan, I think, is the best broadcaster in the business. Yeah. yeah. Um, that nobody has a delivery like Kevin Harlan. It's fantastic. When you listen to an NBA game that he's doing, you're like, holy moly, this is. I feel like I'm watching Game Seven on a Tuesday. Every, every, I mean, every game feels like the most important game ever. It's awesome. Jeff Cameron, Show 933 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. What's up, guys? Our next partner that you're going to hear from is Athletic Greens. You've heard me talk about Athletic Greens in the past. Happy to talk about them again. I take Athletic Greens every day, and I gave them a try because certainly I wanted more energy, sustained energy. I wanted to support my immune system. I don't like taking pills and vitamins per se. And I wanted something that tasted good, too. And the first time I tried it, I was very surprised. Uh, It had an appreciable effect on my energy levels. And also, uh, over time, you'll note that it uh, it helps your skin, your hair, your nails. I don't have a lot of hair, but if I did, I bet I could feel that. I bet I could tell. It's a comprehensive health 
uh, habit, and uh, it is a, a powerful one at that. AG1 is great for recovery. Uh, that's Athletic Greens. And uh, I, I take mine basically when I wake up every morning. I don't have to worry about it because you get all the nutrients that you want. It's the best way to ensure that you're going to get all of your vitamins. It's a carbon-neutral business, by the way, if that's important to you. It is to a lot of people, and that's good to know as well. I would also note that uh, it is a comprehensive solution to what you need from a supplement routine. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs right now with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash JCS. Helps me out, guys, if you use that. Not financially, but it lets them know that you heard this ad on my show. And I do take it, and I am vouching for them because I enjoy their product. Athleticgreens.com slash JCS. Check it out. I think you'll note the difference in your life with a simple drink each and every morning to start your day. Athleticgreens.com slash JCS. Plus, our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Hi, this is Jamie McClenney from Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Managing downside risk in your portfolio is one of the biggest challenges that you'll face in retirement. Trillions of dollars in stimulus from the Federal Reserve and D.C. politicians combined with zero interest rates have propped up financial markets since the financial crisis ended in 2009. The Fed recently ended quantitative easing and has started to raise interest rates at a time when the global economy was already slowing. Have you considered what another 50% correction in the stock market would do to your retirement plan? If you're concerned about where this all might be headed and would like to find out about the potential benefits of an active risk management strategy for your portfolio, give me a call at 850-900-5200 and schedule a time for a review of your portfolio from an active risk management perspective. Make Jamie your first call for a second opinion. Investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Hey Tallahassee, it's Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. You're probably driving right now, which means you're surrounded by glass. Did you know that each piece is made differently? Your windshield is two sheets of glass with a thin plastic in between. This allows it to take an impact without going all the way through. Side and back glasses are typically tempered. This strengthening process is what allows them to be shattered in the event of an emergency. Regardless of the glass or how it breaks, we can help. Trust your local Autoglass experts. Seminole Autoglass, proudly serving the Big Ben for over 15 years. Better call Seminole. <laughs> We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. So this is kind of a Libations Friday topic, or it feels like one, but it is Interesting and somewhat embarrassing, I, I, I have to admit. I don't mean for me, but for Florida State. So I saw I would not have even known about this story. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, you guys know me. I'm not gonna pretend to uh to care about something that I normally don't just for the sake of, of talking here. Um, this is a women's basketball story, um, which I don't care at all about ever, really, uh, unless we're really good and we are pretty good right now. But this one actually involves us, and I did not know this until somebody asked me a question about it on Twitter last night, and I, saw, I went back and kind of researched what the hell they were talking about. I don't know if you've seen this, Tom, but uh, apparently we played against Duke with a men's basketball for a half last week, the other day, and yeah. it, it's become quite the controversy. Um, so I'm going to read, I, I don't have a problem with, uh, Carol Lawson, the head coach at Duke, um, the way that I thought I would when I read the headline, because if you read further, she, she goes out of her way to say, that's not why we lost Florida state beat us. So I'm going to give her some credit here. They lost 70 to 57 in Tallahassee. We, we, we know that on Sunday, and that's a good win for Florida state. 
Um, nice bounce back, and that's a that's a it's a trouncing, frankly, of a, of a good team. So after Duke beat Pitt yesterday, she ended her news conference by speaking about the game on Sunday against us, and she said, "Did Carol Lawson? Uh, this would never happen in a men's game. This would never happen. It's embarrassing for our sport." Uh, Lawson said, and for those that don't know, women's basketball is a different size than a men's basketball. It's about an inch smaller, if, if you, if you want to know. In fact, I love women's basketballs because I can easily palm them. And back when I was constantly wanting to dunk, I, I could dunk a women's basketball a lot easier than a men's basketball. So, yeah, it's a little bit smaller. Lawson said that throughout the first half, Duke players were complaining about the ball. They were 7 of 34 from the field in the opening 20 minutes of the game. Uh, that ain't good. <laughs> Florida State was 10 of 30, uh, and we were 14 of 31 in the second half. Quote, to have a game like that at the end of the season could be the difference between a seed, between a title. My players don't deserve that, and neither do theirs. It's a complete failure, and you can figure out – who the people I'm talking about that failed the sport are and our players and both of the teams that played. Lawson said that the assistant coach, Winston Gandy, went to the scorer's table at the half to check the ball when he realized the problem was it was a men's ball. Quote, we have concluded that through our investigation, this was definitely a men's ball. The conference in Florida State is saying that it was not a men's ball. Lawson goes on to say, let me be clear, Florida State beat us. They beat us playing with a men's ball in the first half and a women's ball in the second half. But I can't say if we'd have played with a women's ball in the first half and the second half that we would have won. I can't say that. But they can't say that either. Lawson said the ACC has instituted a rule change under which players have to confirm the correct ball during the captain's meeting before the tip-off. She went on to say it's very frustrating. The game was not treated with the utmost respect for the players on both teams. So I give her credit for going out of her way to make sure that she lets you know she doesn't think they lost because they played with a men's ball. She's just – she thinks it's an affront to the women's game that that kind of oversight could happen. And I think she's right. It's true. It would never happen in a men's game. You would never start a game with a women's basketball in a men's game. It would never happen. It would get found out beforehand. It, it wouldn't even be a thing. So the fact that it happened – in a women's game kind of does suck for the women involved. And I kind of feel bad thinking that, you know, Florida state screwed up here. Well, the question is at what level, because um, when, when the article says, and I've read that piece as well, it's an AP piece, I believe that Florida state and, and who else, the NCAA, the ACC, both the ACC. Said, the ACC. Yeah. So what's interesting to me about that is where do you draw the line at Florida state? Like, is that at the administration level, the athletic department level, the coaching staff? Like, where, where, where is Florida State encapsulated in this particular story? Because she is implying, Coach Lawson is implying, that you know who I'm talking about. And I kind of don't beyond the conference level and the officials. Like, the officials, of course, are in the mix here and culpable because these details need to be checked off before the game, just like anything else. You know, they'll, they'll gripe about not having a jersey tucked in. Well, you better check to make sure that the actual ball that you're playing with <laughs> it's the is, right ball. It's the right ball as you're throwing it to be tipped off. Yeah. To start a game. It's probably an important part of the gig. But as it pertains to Florida State's culpability, is she criticizing Coach Wyckoff and Florida State staff? Is she saying that we're trying to cut corners around here? Or is it that the administration is in denial and saying we didn't do anything wrong? because they like the result that we got. I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly she's implying on that front, but there is no doubt that when you're talking about the officials, those involved in making sure that, you know, everything is where it needs to be, those people failed and the, and the conference uh, by extension, because that's their responsibility also failed in this situation. Yeah, no, there's, I, I think she's inferring the officials failed. I did not attend this game. I didn't see a second of this game. I, I didn't see one basket in this game. So I don't know where the officials men, um, because it would seem to me that she would raise uh, a level of ire over that if the men uh, blew this more well, than I'd she would a woman. 
Well, what does it matter? What if you're an official and you blow your assignment because you don't know what the ball is? It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman in that situation. You just suck at your job. You do. I think it's implied that you don't care as much, perhaps. Sure. I think. Um, I think. Well, she might be blaming the conference. Coach Lawson might be blaming the conference and saying, "I mean, it, it is an extension. There is verifiable proof that at that least the NCAA doesn't care. That's that we we know that." They did this at the NCAA tournament. I mean, and and the yes, Mark Emmert's first response was, "You figure it out." Basically, yeah. that's what he said. So yeah, yeah so I mean, that that is a case in which a man who heads a very powerful organization that is running the most magnificent tournament the game features, and he's, I mean, absolutely just irreverent. He doesn't care at all about the concerns of the women and their uh, facilities in that situation. And so I think that this would be the byproduct of that, this feeling that the men involved in the women's game do not care at all about the women's game. And I can understand why, one, if you were a woman in that sport, I understand why you would feel that way. Especially with the opening of this segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make it clear that I do yeah. not care about yeah. women's basketball. Sure. And I want to do that because I want to be transparent. I'm not trying to pretend I do. I don't. But the people involved should. <laughs> I mean, well, and, and it's BS. Yeah, this is BS. But, you know, the important thing here is also to make sure that you stress, and, and she did a good job, uh, Coach Lawson did, that this is not about the players on Florida State's side. Correct. Both teams, if you look at the shooting, it's give or take a shot. You're both garbage in the first half. You're shooting, you know, 30% plus for Florida State, under 30% oh. for Duke. But, I mean, it's seven made field goals and ten made field goals on 66 shots. Yeah, that's not very good. Perhaps you are illuminating why it is that I don't watch. Oh. A lot. <laughs> I, no, I, seriously. Yes, that's that's look. Here's what I'm saying. You know, with how precise that sport is in terms of your angles and everything as a shooter, if Correct. you increase the size of an NBA basketball by an inch of circumference and you upped it a couple of ounces before, say, the All Star game started, you'd have the lowest scoring All Star game in history. It might actually look like a normal NBA game, and you'd say, "What the hell gives? These guys are, are throwing up bricks left and right." So, I mean, there is there is a precision to this. I, I'm confused any- about it. A- Yeah, I I am confused about a couple of things here. I I don't know who's at fault. I think you're right to blame the officials. They should certainly know the difference between a men and women's basketball. I'm not an official, and I can tell you instantly if a ball is not the right size. I know that just from playing high school. I mean, you you know, you know. So go back to youth sports. I mean, soccer is an easy one. Remember the size three, size four, size five? Correct. You can tell if there's a size five when there should be a size four out there on the field. Very easily. Very easily. Yes. Yeah. No, I don't. What I'm surprised by, uh, she does mention that the players were complaining about the ball. Well, it, the first time I have a player come over to my bench and complain about the ball, we're not playing anymore until I get confirmation that the, we're playing with the right ball. I mean, what were we doing here? Correct, which also raises the questions about the ACC and the university. So were these, were these complaints lodged at the scores table or to the officials and they were denied until halftime? Like, is that something that happened here as a, as a process where – you know, it's not just something's wrong with the ball. You take it another step, and then institutionally, there was an issue until somebody said, oh, yeah, at halftime, my bad. Forgot about that. Went to the wrong duffel bag for the game tonight. Like, you know, yeah. I just wonder what the timeline of, of events would be because, again, to use the soccer example, not the same sport, Yeah. but if we had the wrong size ball and it was a size five and I'm playing at under 10s or under 12s, like we'd all kind of know and, and agree that we need to switch that thing like pronto. So did we have complaints on our sideline as well? I mean, you would know. You would know the difference is my point. I, I'm, I'm, the whole story's weird. It's not the end of the world. It is what it is. Uh, both teams play with the same ball, so nobody had an advantage. We, we know that. But, but one thing I would say is I, I hate that it involved Florida State at home because in some ways it would seem that Florida State is culpable. I don't know that they are. Um, but I would also say that it is weird to me that that wasn't remedied immediately because here's what would have happened. If, if the referee, say, eight minutes into the game is alerted to the fact that they're playing with the wrong ball, all that would have had to happen to avoid this being a national story is for him to walk over, ask for both coaches to meet him at the scorer's table and say, listen, guys, I just want you to know because we're not trying to hide anything. We just realized we're playing with the wrong ball. 
And I apologize. That's disrespectful to you guys. We did not mean to have that happen. We grabbed a men's ball instead of a women's ball. Our bad. From this point forward, we're playing with a women's ball. My apologies. This is done. This is done. That's the end of it. Both coaches would say thank you for letting us know. Um, you know, let, let's not let that happen again, but okay. And th- that's have, it. Yeah. An incredulous look, walk back to the benches. And then he'd be like, all right, we, we move forward, we move on. But here's the other thing. I'm going to plead ignorance here because uh, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> you're closer. Well, you're closer to basketball on a prep level than I am too. Right. Um, and I know this is college, but don't they rotate basketballs in a game here? Or they only, is it just one basketball is used through, for the entirety? Like, so there's no, there's no rotation. There's no, no, I don't think they rotate balls. No, they use one uh, ball. Clearly, they must not because, I mean, shoot. Yeah. If you I don't rotate, think they, like, whoops, what, what well, is now this? Now that I think about it, no, I don't think they do. I think they want a consistency. So the ball you're playing with to start a game, you you adjust to, and that's that. Some balls are slipperier than others. Hey, now. And uh, that's the way it works. So no, I, that was always the thing. You go in somebody else's gym. I, I did play in middle school. And- yeah. There, there were teams that like to use a slick basketball if they had larger dudes. I hated that. I hated that. That's why LeBron does what he does with the chalk. I mean, we all know that's NBA players. They have the biggest hands in the world. Yeah. Doris will tell you. And uh, and yet, and yet, they, you know, they deal with that issue as well. The ball is very slippery when you have a bunch of sweaty people uh, handling it. So uh, it is, it, it is interesting. I, anyhow, we'll move forward. By the way, just so I can avoid this conversation, I don't want to have to have it because it's just people love to be angry. They just love to be angry. There are plenty of men's sports that I don't watch either, guys. Tons of men's sports that I don't care at all about. Wouldn't watch it if you paid me. Swimming's one of them. I don't care. So, so there you go. I mean, like, just so you know, it's not just women's basketball that I uh, loathe. <laughs> That's true. You, you you do watch uh, women's golf and tennis. So I'll stick up. Oh, with- love it. In fact, it's better than the men in tennis, not yeah. golf, but it is better than the men. Uh, women's tennis is better than men's tennis. It just is. And it, it and that's because there are actual volleys and rallies. Um, you know, the equipment and the size of these dudes now has gotten to a point where if you if you can dominate with the serve, you can dominate, and that's the end of it. You right. Know? Now, I'm not saying they lack skills, but you know what I mean. The evolution of the women's game is probably close to something you saw in the 70s or the 80s with the old rackets. Yeah. The velocity, the velocity of the back and forth. Yeah, I remember worrying that uh, – the really strong players uh, that came out of the 80s, Martina Navratilova, for example, she revolutionized the game. It's later on, Steffi Graf, and then, of course, Serena. But, I mean, when you go through the evolution of women's tennis, um, she was the first woman I ever saw that uh, was built that powerfully. And her serve bore that out. And I remember thinking, no, I don't want the game to go down this path because I love long rallies. I mean, it's a testament to strategy and angles and fitness and, and all of that stuff. Willpower, you know, as opposed to sheer power. Uh, but yeah. yeah. And I would also note this, and I'm not trying to walk back what I said. I will say it because I, I actually had this conversation a couple of days ago with a buddy of mine when you see the best teams in women's basketball, it is a watchable sport that, that now not like it used to be like I, when Tennessee dominated the sport and later UConn, you, you could watch games. And you're like, this is not competitive. This is not fun. This is, there's nothing the, the level of ex, uh, excellence is not where it needs to be. That's not true now of like the best four to eight teams. The, the, the game has come a, a long way. It's Jeff Cambridge, 93, three real talk radio war chant TV. Right here in our hometown is a local spot where you can take a break from all your worries. A place where everybody knows his name is Smitty's Tap House and Grill. Smitty's deep appreciation for fine craft beers and tasty bar treats sets the stage as the ideal local neighborhood pub. Want to know more? Just visit smittystaphouse.com to check out the full menu. Come see us at Smitty's Tap House and Grill on Thomasville Road just north of Cary Forest Parkway. You'll be glad you came where everybody knows his name. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Thick fireplace makes your house a home. How's your fireplace looking? Not too well? 
Hearth and Patio can help you with that. Actually, Hearth and Patio can help you with anything fire. Give my friends a call at Hearth and Patio. If you need new fireplace, fireplace upgrade, fireplace repair, you need custom outdoor kitchen, grills, or an amazing fireplace for your backyard. 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. Or you can visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth Patio Tallahassee. They keep the home fires burning. Do, 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 do. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears, what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> just a slow burn. Slow, slow oh, burn. This thing I mean, just finished could, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go, go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live 30 years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay. You know? Mouse it is. Gordo, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Greg Tish here along with Matty Rowe. And you can listen to us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Matt, we give away a couple things each week. Just a few. We've got the Florida Farm Bureau Insurance Wheel of Food. We have Give Me a Second, where we play a second of a song, and you guess that song. And we also play FLA or Nay. We have a lot of fun Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. Think it's enough? We can talk about our feelings. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center, online at orangetheoryfitness.com. This is not going to be your typical tub talk, Tom. I'm warning you in advance, but if you would, let's cue up the bubbles. It's time for Tub Talk, brought to you by pinch a -Penny Pools and Spas. Buy yourself the hot tub you've always wanted at the price you've always wanted from Pinch a Penny on Greer Street. Now, it's live to the tub. I'd like to be in a hot tub. I'd like to be in a hot tub. You can go get you one right now at Pinch a Penny. They've got over 50 to choose from, I think I saw last. It's a lot of different styles of hot tub stuff. It's Penny over time up. for oh, Tub Talk. Looping. Brought to you by <laughs> Pinch a Penny. It's on a loop. They're like, hey, guys, I'm still yeah. here. <laughs> we already know it's tough talk time. Yeah, this morning would have been a perfect time to hop in. Oh, buddy. When it's under 50 degrees and a slight misty rain. Oh, that's the time you want to be in the tub. That is the perfect time. Yeah. Uh, so here's today's tub talk. Not a normal story leading into the Super Bowl. Eagles offensive lineman Josh Sills was indicted by a uh, grand jury on uh, one count of rape and kidnapping. Oh, that's a toughie. That is, uh, my goodness gracious. Um, I'm getting out of the tub. What is this? You know, well, uh, summons was issued uh, for him. Uh, and uh, the NFL noted that Sills has been placed on the commissioner's exempt list, is not permitted to participate in practices or travel with the Eagles to, you know, the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's the weirdest. I mean, what in the hell? Oh, man. Normally, so here's what I mean by that. People, it's funny, the people love to to spit on players and 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 denigrate players of every league, right? They all because they're jealous of the money that they make. And so they a lot of time I hear like inferences from fans that players uh, have a higher level of uh, criminality in their workplace than anywhere else, which isn't true. I mean, we know statistically uh, that Basically, they're just a subset. They happen to be athletes, but they're just a subset of society, right? They're just, it's like if you work in a building that has that many employees, uh, one of them might end up being a criminal. Uh, every now and again, you're going to learn about Dale, who uh, was into some things you didn't realize. You're like, oh, yep. Dale's a mess, um, as in Dale's going to jail. <laughs> but yeah, things like that happen all the time. It's not good. It's not good in any walk of life when that happens, of course. But you don't typically find out that one of your players right before the Super Bowl is being charged with the, the rape part is, is disturbing and hard to say out loud. It's oddity when you hear they throw in the kidnapping. What in the world are we? Mr. Sills, what, this is all terrible, but what we, we have a bona fide, like, that's like having a serial killer in your room. Like, what are we doing? 
No, uh, it's uh, it, it reminds me, and I, you know, I hear that. Maybe I shouldn't, but remember before the Bucks Super Bowl with uh, Kansas City, like the whole storyline was Andy Reid's son, and oh, this, this yeah. wasn't a violent crime. It was a, it was a, a serious crime though about he's been charged and went to jail yes yeah basically dui manslaughter dui I mean, whatever he killed, he killed somebody yeah and it's just it, it's when that happens to a team You're, especially yeah. if it's a rotational player somebody beloved in the locker room i don't know that two weeks is enough time if you're just talking about gearing up to play the game like that has a serious impact and it had to have on andy reed not that that would have made his tackles play any better against the Bucks' pass rushers, but I mean, good God, it's just sometimes things come crashing down. They remind you that, yeah, this is the biggest game of the year in football, but I mean, this dude's a rapist. If if the charges are true, if the charges are true, it's an awful, 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 awful thing, and everybody gets that. It is also just a shocking and surprising thing to read about involving two teams going to the Super Bowl. Like this is the the, the first story the first big story that starts your week like all right this should be a great matchup by the way quick side note one of the eagles offensive linemen has been charged with kidnapping and rape yeah oh okay all right all right next storyline guys next story i mean it's not media day if you're an offensive lineman for the eagles next. oh man brutal brutal uh all right so short segment there i know that was uplifting tub talk I will note that we're going to segue into uh, a hodgepodge of best of stuff in the second hour. It's kind of a dead week, guys. We have some behind the scenes stuff we've got to get cleaned up. And uh, nothing bad, nothing bad. Nobody's getting charged with kidnapping around here. But uh, but that's <laughs> sorry, Tom. But uh, <laughs> saw the look on your face. But we're going to use today. We're not going to use Super Bowl week. We're going to use today. Uh, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Every day, Sellers makes life a little better for homeowners, helping them find the best design ideas for their homes with the best quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Even mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions are at their fingertips in their remarkable showroom. Maybe it's time for you to get the Sellers Advantage for your home or office. Find them on Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhand Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For style, quality, and design, get the Sellers Advantage. In Tallahassee, call 656 656- 8453. Now go, go call seven no glass. Now get on the road and get it done fast. Your local family owned glass company serving the Big Bend for over 15 years. At Seminole Auto Glass, we care about your safety. Insurance will send you wherever it benefits them, not the quality of service. There's a difference in auto glass companies. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass. Get the lady kind of broken glass, and you know who they are. Better call Seminole. So let's say you're considering buying a new home in the current climate. All heard that demand is high, inventory is low. So how do you get a leg up on the rest of the buyers all making offers on the same house as you? Oh, that's a toughie. But the first place I'd suggest you start is with a call to my friend Shannon at Legendary Home Loans. Shannon will set you up with a complete pre-approval underwriting. This used to be an upgrade, but nowadays it's got to be standard. You want to get your offer on a new home pushed to the front of the line, you need a TBD full underwriting approval from Legendary Home Loans. You'll shorten or even remove your financing contingency and the sellers will know that your offer is real and ready to go. It's tough out there these days, folks, so why not have the advantage of a proven winning team in your huddle? Get pre-approval underwriting from my friend Shannon with the one and only Legendary Home Loans. Call now, 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. 
Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost, month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-279-0433 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-279-0433. That's 800-279-0433. What do you have to lose? Call 800-279-0433. Again, 800-279-0433. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com gold medalist in something that you just don't watch any other time but the olympics like they're not involved in another sport where you even remotely pay attention to like i don't i'm not paying attention to greco-roman wrestling just not doing it i I couldn't name a single individual competing in greco-roman wrestling but i remembered rulon gardner do you remember that are you old enough i know the name well because anytime you watch greco-roman wrestling in the olympics that name is brought up a billion times because he beat a Russian that hadn't lost in a thousand years and looked like King Kong and was the devil. He was like a tax collector in Boy. Russia with a shaved head, and you should see this guy that he beat. I remember when he beat him. It's insane. Uh, he beat His name was uh, uh, Alexander Karolin, Kal- I think it was. Yeah! The guy he beat, the Russian he beat, hadn't lost in 13 years. He hadn't given up a point in six years. He was considered literally unbeatable. So Rulon Garner beat him in the 2000 Olympics, and it was a huge deal because he won the gold. He was an American. So in this country, obviously, we celebrated him, and he's a doofus-looking cat. I mean, when you see Rulon Garner, he's from – uh, Wyoming, he's, uh, how do I say it? Um, he's just not a striking individual. Okay. okay? Let's, yeah. I, I'll just, yeah. I'm trying to be fair mm-hmm. here. He's just, you're like, well. He looks like he would be a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Like a retired, washed up WWE wrestler. Not, yeah, a, yeah, not yeah. a world-class Greco-Roman gold medalist. Not that kind of wrestler. Right, like he was the like, first match when uh, yeah, Kurt Henning was out there back in the day. Or, right. You know. No, he, he looks, yeah, like a washed up, balding, hillbilly gym, knees, arthritic, struggling, signing right, he, like, a poster. He walks bow-legged kind of thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So like anyway. Rob Van Dam. Have you seen Rob Van Dam try to walk? I have not. It's uh, really depressing. It's kind of like the big show. So it was the first gold medal, Olympic gold medal, won by an American Greco-Roman wrestler in a full international field. So he had all of these things become first in moments to shine. I remember he did the late-night talk show circuit, the whole deal. But I haven't thought of Rulon Garner since. Of course I wouldn't. I'm laying in bed, flipping around the other night, and I come across... You know I love survival specials. You know I love survival shows. So anybody that survives something absurd, like being lost at sea for 15 days or three months or something and surviving in the ocean with sharks, and everything, I'm, I, you got me. Lost in the wilderness, you got me. I'm in there. I'm watching what happens to you. Because I love to hear them regale me with these stories. They all lived, and I'm always interested in, well, what did you do to survive? And it's always crazy what people will do. You know, the guy who got his arm trapped underneath the rock, and that ended up being yeah, a story. Yeah, the saw James his, Franco movie. Yeah, he had to saw his own arm off. People can do that. They saw their own limbs off just to survive. Or they eat one another after a plane crash. And I'm interested in stuff like that. So I'm flipping around the other night. It's late. 
Wife's out cold. Whole family's out cold. I can't sleep. Flippity do. And I flip over to this station, and the and the the, the conditions on the screen are are dire. It is clearly a blizzard somewhere. It looks. It just looks desolate. So as I, I so I'm like, whoa, what is this? But I can't turn it up real loud because she's sleeping. My wife's sleeping. But I want to know what's going on. Where are they? Is this one of those shows in Alaska? What are they doing? And so I'm watching. And there's this gigantic, rotund man. I mean, a behemoth man. And the camera's right up on him. And I thought, well, they did him no favors. I mean, they could have shot this at a different angle. This poor man. Uh, you know, I mean, we all know, anybody that's ever taken a selfie, you don't take it from below. You take it from on high because you don't need your jowls jetting out there, especially if you're this guy. I mean, I, I could lose a few LBs. But this guy is huge. That uncomfortably fat. That where you're like, oh, right. He, he could, could lose die. a defensive tackle. He could die. Yeah. Like in an yeah. hour, you're mm -hmm. thinking this guy's in trouble. So I'm looking at him, but I can't really hear what he's saying. It's evident that he's been lost in the wilderness here. And I'm, I, so you got me. You got me. Now I'm like, oh, so this fat ass got stuck out in the woods. Well, he's stored up for it. <laughs> he could just, he, he could go into hibernation. So I'm watching and I look and I go, that guy looks like that wrestler. And I and I'm trying to I'm racking my brain. I'm like, that's Rulon Garner. God, I haven't thought of Rulon Garner in a long time. That guy looks like just like Rulon Garner. And I'm watching, and I'm watching, and then bam, his name comes up. It's Rulon Garner. It is Rulon Garner, but he's like 600 pounds heavier than he was when he won the gold medal, the Greco-Roman gold medal over that Russian. I went, oh God, Rulon, time has not been a friend. So I'm watching and I'm thinking, well, what happened? This fat ass got stuck. He was on a jet ski, uh, not a jet ski, uh, uh, a snowmobile, mm -hmm. and he flipped it. And he's huge. Oh, I mean, no. he, <laughs> so he's rolling down the hill. <laughs> Tom, you can see where this is going. Oh, God. My man flipped a snowmobile at like 800 pounds. And he's stuck. This fat ass, it's hard enough to get up with no snowmobile on top of him, but with a snowmobile on top of him. Oh, uh, no. we, and it's and it's snowing. Now it's snowing. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, this poor bastard. Oh, what must he been thinking? Could his hand reach the ground? He's just twisted to the side. He can't. So oh. he basically. <laughs> So now I'm sitting up in the bed. I'm like, I got to see how this ends. So Rulon Garner, A, is on my TV in the middle of the, the night. television is wonderful. B, <laughs> B, he's, you know, an extra 400 pounds oh. from having won the gold medal. And I think, well, God, dog, Rulon, this is ridiculous. So he tells his story of survival. Um, he ended up. Uh, he had he, he gets from underneath this this snowmobile, and he's able to kind of waddle to this area that has a couple of trees. Now the blizzard's hitting, and he saw it coming. He was like, "Oh, I'm stuck. This is not good." He's thinking he's going to die. He finally finds a way to get out from underneath the snowmobile after a lot of work. He barely has the energy. Well, he knows leverage, though, so he's got that going for him. <laughs> he's, he's barely got the energy to get up, but he knows, and he says, I'm going to die. If I lay here, I don't, it doesn't matter how exhausted I am, I'm going to die. I got to get up. So he gets his fat ass up, and he's trying to get over there to those trees because he's going to try to make a little fort, and he takes one step, whoof, sinks down up to his shoulders. That's how big the snowdrift is. Oh, my. So now think about this. Rulon Garner, 600-pound Rulon Garner, who's right. injured, by the way, yeah. uh, has got to find a way out of this snowdrift that's up to his head. Yeah, he's in a Mongolian death ritual now. <laughs> this is not yeah. good. But he does it. He fights and he claws, and he gets to the tree, these two little trees. Through the drift? He does. He kind of crawls his way, oh figures it out. Oh, God. Oh, it's, it's crazy. So then he's leaning against these trees, and he's packing snow around him, and he's thinking, well, this is how it ends, you know? And he's thinking back on his gold medal. And <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking, yeah, 
so, juxtapose the glory of winning. Yeah, beating a dude that hadn't lost in 13 years. In Athens, if it's the 2000, if it mm -hmm. is, in fact, the mm -hmm. 2000 Olympics. It was. So you are... Yes, the birthplace of the Olympics. You are a household name across the world for this accomplishment, even if it is for a day or two. It's mm -hmm. still your household mm -hmm. name across the planet. Yeah. And now... Yeah. You just waddled through a snowdrift up to your shoulders. In the middle at, of nowhere. At 600 pounds. Yeah, you've lost your control of your battle with weight. Because you flipped on a snowmobile. <laughs> and, and death is die. impending. Yeah, you're going to die. The darkness is creeping. How does that? I wonder how his story will end. This is a wonderful moment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Said the Zen master. Yeah. So, I, so I was just absolutely uh, gutted. For this poor man, watching this guy, I mean, he gets choked up thinking about his parents and all this. It's awful. And I'm going, Rule on. You just, this has to be a wake-up call. We've got to get it together, you my man. You hate your we, parents, we, we dude. Got, Come we, on. We've got to get it together. So at the end of the day, he ends up having to get some things amputated because he's out there freezing his ass off. But he survived. Uh, he lost some fingers and a, and a toe. Uh, but but he, <laughs> do you know how much pain you got to be in? You know how cold it has to be to where you're like, well, I'm gonna lose that toe. <laughs> I mean, damn man, have you ever just stuck your hand in a thing of ice? You're like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. I think the doctor's like, this is a gold medal winning <laughs> a gold toe medal right here. Toe. So the next day comes around, and I I wake up and I think that was crazy about Rule on Garner. So I wanted to look up what's been going on. Like, how did he let himself get to this point? So I typed in Rule on Garner, and the very first story I see, here's the headline. <laughs> this is the headline. So this is a multi-chapter story yeah. right here. Here's Rule on Garner. Olympic gold medal medalist kids, 2000 Olympics. After This is the headline. After amputation, motorcycle accident, and plane crash, Olympic gold medal wrestler Rule on Garner faces bankruptcy. <laughs> It's incredible. That is, that's a headline. That's a real headline. I'm reading it again. That is incredible. After amputation, motorcycle accident, and plane crash, Olympic gold medal wrestler Ruan Garner now faces bankruptcy. God, dog life has beat the bejesus out of this man. He should be smoking a crack pipe somewhere right now. I mean, my God. It served one purpose. But, uh, yeah. The opening line to the story from John Clark. After a string of setbacks, you think, <laughs> including having his toe amputated, surviving a motorcycle accident and a plane crash, Olympic gold medalist Ruan Garner is facing bankruptcy. Court records show Gardner, after years of several failed businesses, now owes his creditors nearly $3 million. Gardner is disputing the debt. He says it largely stems from a $400,000 loss after he was defrauded by a business associate. Because of course he was. Life just kicks his face every day. The price of winning that gold medal right. has been steep, to say the least. So he was good at one thing. Yes, and to look at him, you would know it. Quote, I got taken advantage of, and I pay the price every day. I'm trying. That's the saddest damn quote I've ever oh. read. I'm trying. Good God. Jeez, well, bankruptcy is nothing for him compared to what he's gone through. Right. So That's just numbers. Yeah, he's filed for bankruptcy. Uh, he's selling his Ford Excursion. Oh, Along with dozens of watches and knives, Ruan, Ruan, I tell you this, buddy, you owe millions of dollars your Ford excursion <laughs> and your knives are not going to get it done, my man, unless you have Davy Crockett's or something. I mean, what are we I've always thought that people, you know, if they buy a watch, they want a knife. <laughs> you can sell them both at the same shop, and that's what we're going to open. He's also autographing shoes oh. and, and pictures. We should buy one just to help him. Well, it gets worse, Tom. I looked him up. 
on Twitter. I don't even mean to make fun. I, I, we should no, no, no. Help this poor man. Uh, I looked him up on Twitter. Is he crazy? Even uh, more so? No, he's not crazy. I just feel sorry for him. If you just go through it, it it's the timeline that's going to sadden well, this you. This is sobering. Here he is. It's that time of year again. <laughs> We're making I'm a left so, turn at Cruel I'm Lane so, now, I'm man. I'm so sorry, but I, could, I read this tweet and I went, holy oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's that time of year again. <laughs> Please let me know. <laughs> this is like a Saturday Night Live skit, I swear to God. He tweeted, it's that time of year again. Please let me know if you'd like to purchase a signed copy of my book. <laughs> this is... I, I'm not, <laughs> I've run the full spectrum you here when I was enjoying it. this. I... <laughs> Damn. No, no, I'm not laughing. Okay, so hold on. Hold on. Guys should take better care of themselves. <laughs> okay, I, I need to clarify something here so that you don't think I'm just Satan. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is that this whole rabbit hole I went down got more and more absurd by the second and just when i thought well he, he's hit rock bottom he can't it's not gonna get any worse than this he's had his toe cut off because he got stuck underneath a god dog uh, snowmobile nice on the fly <laughs> edit there that's good <laughs> he's having to waddle through a drift up to his head he and then he's in a plane crash and a motorcycle crash and he was defrauded by a partner and he owes millions of dollars and he's selling his watches and knives. I go, well, good man, this this poor bastard. And then I just uh, I thought, well, let's see what he's doing now. And I went there and then I saw that tweet and I went, Man, I can't write this. Like if I were trying you could make this funny. Guys should take better care of themselves. <laughs> if you were writing a character. You know, oh, like, yeah, like, no, like I, I get absurd. it. I get it. This is. <laughs> that is oh. I mean, what are the chances that I'm laying in bed and I'm like, oh, look at that. It's Ruan Garner. Yeah, but that he won. Remember, he won a gold medal. Yes. This and man, the most improbable of gold medals. Right. One that nobody thought he could win. He became. So a, that's the beginning of the screenplay. Yes. And the end is my man selling a freaking Seiko to try to make 50 bucks so he can pay off his $4 million of debt. Guys should take better care of themselves. I can't even. Oh, my God. I'm glad it's a libation. <laughs> the sobering end to that story. <laughs> we got to help him. We got to go fund this oh, guy. Oh, man. Don't let. I, nobody's. Hey, let's, it's just our little conversation, guys. We're not. Ruan. If you're out there, buddy, keep it's on trucking. Me. I'm surprised that wasn't a tweet. The name of the book is, in case you want to get an autographed copy, Never Stop Pushing My Life from Wyoming to oh. the Olympic Man. Partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Every day, Sellers makes life a little better for homeowners, helping them find the best design ideas for their homes with the best quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Even mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions are at their fingertips in their remarkable showroom. Maybe it's time for you to get the Sellers Advantage for your home or office. Find them on Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhem Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For style, quality, and design, get the Sellers Advantage. In Tallahassee, call 656-8453. Now go, go, call Seminole Glass. Now get on the road and get it done. 
fast. Your local family-owned glass company, serving the Big Bend for over 15 years. At Seminole Auto Glass, we care about your safety. Insurance will send you wherever it benefits them, not the quality of service. There's a difference in auto glass companies. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass. They handle any kind of broken glass, and you know who they are. Better call Seminole. <laughs> So, let's say you're considering buying a new home in the current climate. All heard that demand is high, inventory is low. So, how do you get a leg up on the rest of the buyers all making offers on the same house as you? Oh, that's a toughie. But the first place I'd suggest you start is with a call to my friend Shannon at Legendary Home Loans. Shannon will set you up with a complete pre-approval underwriting. This used to be an upgrade, but nowadays it's got to be standard. You want to get your offer on a new home pushed to the front of the line, you need a TBD full underwriting approval from Legendary Home Loans. You'll shorten or even remove your financing contingency, and the sellers will know that your offer is real and ready to go. It's tough out there these days, folks, so why not have the advantage of a proven winning team in your huddle? Get pre-approval underwriting from my friend Shannon with the one and only Legendary Home Loans. Call now, 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com, fsu Home Loans. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-279-0433 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today, 800-279-0433. That's 800-279-0433. What do you have to lose? Call 800-279-0433. Again, 800-279-0433. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. It's not his great sorrow that I'm deriving any pleasure from. Oh, this is, yeah, this is important that you state this. Because you know that. You know, I know that's not I, what I'm laughing I at. I know, but I know, I know how it sounds, how it sounds too. Okay. I'm I, not, I'm not sitting around thinking it's funny that <laughs> Ruan Garner has had a series of, of missteps and unfortunate events happen to him per se. I, I'm, I'm saying that. The absurdity, you know, I'm an absurdist. I love the, yes. okay, yes. the absurdity of this man's story post gold medal. No, even up to gold medal. That's absurd. The odds of doing that. Right. I don't know. What's greater? The odds of beating this guy, right, in the time and place that he beat him. Or then having all of this crap happen to him. Well, I mean, to get to that point, right, so to be an Olympic athlete in the first place, the odds are astronomical. To be able to win a gold medal, even more astronomical. To beat somebody who hadn't lost in years, over a decade, and hadn't given up a point in six years, even more unbelievably large. Like, numbers we can't comprehend. And then you juxtapose that with snowmobile, plane crash, motorcycle, if, it, in fact, his friend did defraud him or if he's using that, I don't know. But defrauded thing. I think he probably was defrauded, yes. Taking I mean, advantage of, yes. The odds of all those oh, happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, you're right. I should clarify this. I, I'm prepared for the hate mail. That's fine. You guys, you got to understand. I don't take – the pleasure does not, again, derive from his misfortune. Like his personal agony, I take no pleasure in that. I hope he's happy in life. He's doing something well now. I tried to look it up during the break. 
you know, I don't know. It's 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 been a struggle, but it's a hell of a thing. It, it is, it, it's just amazing that I was sitting there and I go, "Hey, it's Rulon Garner." Yeah. And then that <laughs> led to you did every... seem pretty happy when you <laughs> dropped the Sling and Seiko's line. Well, it's a good line, but it is it, a good line. <laughs> but but... It, well, no, but it's uh, that's but see that line was meant to illuminate the absurdities of the right. man situation, right? right? I like mean, that's going to help the three million dollars. Well, it's ridiculous. Right. It's yeah. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is ridiculous. That, that is not a drop in the bucket, sir. No, and the fact that somebody advised him to do that, I'm like, let him keep his freaking watches, you a holes. It doesn't make just a declare difference. bankruptcy. Just, and be I, done I can't with it. pay it. I can't pay it. Look at my life. Good Christ, you should be giving me four million dollars. Look at this. Look at me. This is. I mean, come on. There should be a provision in law, in our law here in this great country. That if you survive a snowmobile hazard, a motorcycle accident, and a plane crash, you should be cut a check. Just somebody should cut you a check. Here you go, sir. Sorry about that. Okay, so I, I this is one hundred. This is how open and honest we are on this show. Oh God, this is going to undo the first three minutes of this segment, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Oh, no. I'm going to, because in my effort to see what he was doing now, I went to check for his Wikipedia page. No. It's not about what he's doing. This is not a bit. No, (laughs) it's not. This is not what he, no. But hold on. You're going to. Cringing. You're going to want to hear this. There's a section on injuries. So I, I want to make sure he hadn't suffered anything new. He has it. That's the good news. No new injuries. But the opening line is when Gardner was in elementary school, he was injured during a class show and tell. <laughs> he had his stomach punctured with an arrow. <laughs> All right. Go look it up. I, got, no, I, I ask cannot you, make I gotta this ask up. ask you an honest that question That is here. unbelievable. Did you draw this up as a bit and you're no. just laying it on layer by layer? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I swear to God. Because it seems like you're saving, I, you know. No, no. I looked this up just now. I swear to, I learned a lot of things during the break. I just now looked this up. You happily clicked on that Wikipedia page, I'm sure. I did because I thought, well, it can't get worse than what I just read in that oh article about a God. plane crash, a snowmobile, a motorcycle, selling off Seikos, uh, the whole thing. So my man... This is what's happened. This is his life in a nutshell. The only good thing that's ever happened to him is that he got good on his family's dairy farm at wrestling and uh, and won a gold medal, which is great. But Jesus, he's in elementary school getting shot with a freaking arrow during show and tell. Of course that happened to Rulon Gardner, who is the unluckiest gold medal winner you will ever read about Mm -hmm. modern day job it is is, it's crazy he really is so that plane crash was in lake powell utah they had to it gets better he had to swim this guy is strong now i will say this yes if he can drag himself this is crazy in 2007 he survived a crash when a light aircraft he was traveling in crashed into lake powell in utah the men had to swim for an hour in 44 degree water in order to reach the shore <laughs> i would not be this guy's friend no. i'm not getting don't him. get on an elevator with don't, Rulon don't, Gardner. joe don't That's, be don't you know, be in the same state no don't get you on know, a roller coaster nothing. don't do anything dude shot in the belly with an arrow at show and tell leave Rulon, how'd show and tell go today? I mean, good lord! Leave the immediate area if Rulon Gardner. How many is kids? In it. How many kids in that class? It's Rulon that's up there getting shot with an arrow. Nobody else. <laughs> I bet he shot himself. You know he did by accident with the arrow. What he pointed it the wrong way. I, this guy's got a knack. It's a gift. By the time he got to those Olympics, you couldn't take him out. This no, man had been no. through, he had seen some things. Jeez. That oh. he has to dig down deep and use that strength that got him to the Olympics so often in his life after. 
Well, there's more here that you would think I'm, but I'm not going to do it. I'll tell you during the break. We'll move on in the show. It's not three hours of Ruan Garner, but it is when unbelievable. It, yeah. When he was purchasing a puppy at 12, no, the whole puppy mill attacked him and no, bit him all over no, the body. No, no, no. It said he was, it's another profession that he's involved in, and it's just, no. It's unbelievable. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. I just a, an exotic profession. Or no, no, like no, that. no. It's ridiculous. It's a, it's what you would do if. It's just ridiculous. I just can't. I can't. You selling cuckoos? <laughs> it's just he, he's he's the character. He's the character in Saturday Night Live. Oh, he's in a van down by the river. My man is. It is. Uh, it's a tough go. He's still fighting though. Oh, bless his heart. I'm not. I, I'm afraid to check back on this story. Fund him, now. people. A year from now, I'm going to check in on him. I hope he's. You keep on keeping on. Give this man shelter from the storm. God Almighty. (laughs) That arrow story. I read that as we were sitting here. I went, he's not going to believe how I got to bring that to the table. Yeah. Anyhow, I wish him well. Good God. Poor guy. Guys, our next partner that you're going to hear from is Athletic Greens. You've heard me talk about Athletic Greens in the past. Happy to talk about them again. I take Athletic Greens every day. And I gave them a try because certainly I wanted more energy, sustained energy. I wanted to support my immune system. I don't like taking pills and vitamins per se. And I wanted something that tasted good too. And the first time I tried it, I was very surprised. Uh, It had an appreciable effect on my energy levels. And also, uh, over time, you'll note that it it helps your skin, your hair, your nails. I don't have a lot of hair, but if I did, I bet I could feel that. I bet I could tell. It's a comprehensive health uh, habit and uh, it is a, a powerful one at that. AG1 is great for recovery. Uh, that's Athletic Greens, and uh, I, li- I take mine basically when I wake up every morning. I don't have to worry about it because you get all the nutrients that you want. It's the best way to ensure that you're going to get all of your vitamins. It's a carbon neutral business, by the way. If that's important to you, it is to a lot of people, and that's good to know as well. I would also note that uh, it is a comprehensive solution to what you need from a supplement routine. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs right now with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash JCS. Helps me out, guys, if you use that. Not financially, but it lets them know that you heard this ad on my show. And I do take it, and I am vouching for them because I enjoy their product. AthleticGreens.com slash JCS. Check it out. I think you'll note the difference in your life with a simple drink each and every morning to start your day. AthleticGreens.com slash JCS. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears is what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> just a slow burn. Slow, slow little burn. This thing I mean, just finished I, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live thirty <laughs> years. I thought you were gonna say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay, you know, mouse it is. Gordo bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Matt. Yes, Greg. Do you know all the different ways that you can listen to Real Talk 93.3? There are several. So we've got realtalk93.com. You can go back and listen to all of our shows in the podcast section. That's right. You can also listen on our app as well. Search Real Talk 93.3 and look for the red microphone Mm -hmm. and download our app. Never go anywhere without us. And, of course, you can always listen right on the radio. Well, they are listening. Are they? If they're hearing this commercial, then they're listening. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Oh, Marvin, one time Harrison with a bat beating a tenant who was short on his rent on film. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Domino, you. motherfucker. Say about that. Love you, Marvin. Marvin, one time. For those that are new to the show, you do not remember the long-running conversation and the stunned reaction we had when it came to light that Marvin Harrison was a kingpin in his hometown of Philadelphia after being called the classiest person in football. Well, you know, Tom, he just hands the ball back to the official every time he scores. He acts like he's been there before. Plus, he's a great route runner. He stays never, after practice with Peyton. You never see him calling attention to himself. No. Now we know now why. Now we know why. It was the video of him going to the bar that he owned where he pulled a piece out on the lane. <laughs> Perhaps a Desert Eagle. Yeah. Some impressive. Yeah, he had an, a German elephant gun at one point that he tried to hide, we think. Sorry, the Desert Eagle was at the car wash. That's right. Well, he that gun was what he threw in the bucket after shooting the guy at the bar. I mean, Marvin's done some things now. This would be uh, the latest in a string of troubling incidents involving Marvin Harrison. He uh, allegedly attacked a tenant with a bat over the weekend for uh, being late with the rent. I just watched the video, and it's outstanding. <laughs> it's him walking towards the tenant who's like basically crying out for help because Marvin has come to collect, and he wants his money. I've asked you one time. <laughs> And that's more than most get. So he owns a string of buildings there in Philly. And mm, Oh, one time. I'm so glad to see him back in the news. I'm telling you, more than any other player, nobody surprised us more when it came to light that Marvin has been involved in some things, including perhaps homicide uh, post-career. Listen, uh, you can keep on saying, and Marvin, I want this to be clear, you can keep on saying troubling incidents. I, I will just say unfounded allegations. Okay. That's what I'm going to classify those as. So you remember that guy? There was a guy named Pop who went to the police, um, Dwight Dixon. That was his name, Dwight Dixon, a.k.a. Pop. He accused Harrison of shooting him in April of 2008. Police did a search. They tried to uh, find out what happened there, and they did a – they did a search in the state database of gun licenses and came up with Harrison's name connected to two of the weapons used in a shooting. Uh, and it led to uh, a conversation between Pops and the police, which turned out to be a really interesting conversation. Unfortunately, some of the angles of the cameras that were uh, filming at that time did not allow for a conviction of Marvin Harrison and his cousin Lonnie, Lonnie Anderson also suspected of the shooting. Um, so it, it occurred down the street from a bar that Harrison owned known to, called Playmakers. That was the name of the bar that he owned there in Philly. This is like a show. But that happened. All right, and that camera that they found at Playmakers to try to get the third angle was missing three minutes of tape, the three minutes they were looking for, mm. conveniently. So they did not get a conviction. Pops was later killed. Somebody shot him. Chew on that. They don't know. To this day, no idea who shot Pops after he'd gone to the police to talk about having been shot previously at Playmakers. Pops has long since been dead. <laughs> this is unbelievable, man. That story is crazy. Go read the 2010 GQ story on Marvin Harrison. I mean, the things he's alleged to have been involved in and done in his life, it is, it's the wire. It's unbelievable. And he was a, what, 20 years in the league, oh, all man. pro wide receiver. <laughs> how in the world? He was buttoned up. That's how. He takes care of loose ends. Oh, he clearly. Yeah. Well, listen, that's a, another unfounded allegation. What video evidence can you provide <laughs> I have to none. convince me? I have none. Mm -hmm. I have none. But it wasn't as good. None of these stories were nearly as good as the time that Marvin slapped a fan in Hawaii, allegedly, uh, who had asked for an autograph while he was done practicing in the Pro Bowl. And then Marvin ignored the fan's request for an autograph on a football, and the fan doubled down with the request, kind of in a pushy way, and allegedly was slapped across the face with great gusto by one Marvin Harrison, who I suppose has strong hands.
and then he kept walking. And that could, too, never be proven. Didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen the moment that a fan... There's your a, autograph. I mean, how much in that? You want an, yeah. <laughs> that autograph's not coming off for two weeks. What do you think of that? Oh, man. All right, I'm done talking about Marvin. Because people are out here telling Bamani that I'm talking about Marvin now. And I, you know, no, no, keep it moving. Keep That's it right. Moving, right. He is. Unfounded allegations. That's where I'm going to stand on this one. It is an all-timer. That is still my favorite ah. thing. Can you imagine campus life with Marvin at Harrison? Syracuse? As he's rising to prominence, I suppose, at the same time. I mean, man. Can you think of another player that uh, you... We don't want to party with Marvin, guys. No. <laughs> That's a different kind of party. I know you're up here for a visit. That's you want to meet Marvin. That's a different kind of party right there. Let's go talk with McNabb. Yeah. We're, we're cool over there, but Marvin, let's leave Marvin him alone. Marvin would have had no time for McNabb. Marvin, Marvin and McNabb are different guys. Very different guys. Fundamentally different guys. Are you saying you don't have the heart? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine? Have this conversation. Imagine if Donna McNabb was throwing up in the in the huddle and Mc- Marvin Harrison was on that team. McNabb. He doesn't even have to make fun of you. He just says your name in a certain way, and you go, ooh. So, I, again, we do this every time a Marvin Harrison story comes up. Ooh, I shudder saying the name aloud. Who in the NFL, I mean, go back to that guy's career. Let's go back and revisit the, the, the narrative of Marvin Harrison. He's on Gatorade commercials. Work ethic like no other. Brilliant football mind dedicated to the organization, its community, his teammates, Peyton Manning and him, are at all times just this symbiotic relationship that is Hall of Fame destined. You won't find two people who work harder together and see eye to eye more than Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. So who would have to have been revealed to be a monster to surprise you more than Marvin Harrison. Warwick Dunn? Uh, oh, God, that I would mean, be stunning, yes. yes. You've nailed it. Game over. Wouldn't that be the, the most stunning? That's the old bump set spike to yourself. You handle that one completely. Warwick Dunn, that would be truly stunning. That would hurt, actually. I well, would, because we love Warwick hurt. and what he's done in his life is beyond reproach. But I'm just saying, like... I uh, love a fictional scenario where Peyton calls up Marvin. Marvin, I, now... I know you don't want to take this call, so if you'd like to meet, sit down at the diner. I got something that needs to go away, Marvin, and I've heard you might need to be there, the person I talked to. Marvin probably wouldn't speak in that meeting. He wouldn't say a word. He'd just nod. And he'd pass over a card. That had an address. That had an address and a and phone a, number. Yeah, and that'd be that. And Mar- Marvin would get up, probably pay the bill like a pimp, and walk oh, away. Cash. Cash money. There'd be a hundo. That's it. And he for like a cup of coffee. Like, was a coffee. That's well, of course he did because he's a yeah. He's always up. Yeah, I'm always up. He, That's all he says. <laughs> he gets up. But he loves Peyton. He loves Peyton. Right, because Peyton, Peyton works yeah. hard. Peyton works he hard. He gets, it, he gets it done. He knocks the table. It's the same sort of work ethic. They yep. just knock on and he walks away. Hundred dollar bill remains. Gets up, walks away. That's the end of it. And then they're at practice that Monday. Marvin walks by, just pats Peyton on the back. It's understood. Peyton's like, all right, let's have us a good day of practice. No more words. Somebody get Marvin a water. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the franchise. Plus, our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Hi, this is Jamie McClenney from Trek Financial in Tallahassee. Managing downside risk in your portfolio is one of the biggest challenges that you'll face in retirement. Trillions of dollars in stimulus from the Federal Reserve and D.C. politicians combined with zero interest rates have propped up financial markets since the financial crisis ended in 2009. The Fed recently ended quantitative easing and has started to raise interest rates at a time when the global economy was already slowing. Have you considered what another 50 percent correction in the stock market would do to your retirement plan? If you're concerned about where this all might be headed and would like to find out about the potential benefits of an active risk management strategy for your portfolio, give me a call at 850-900-5200 and schedule a time for a review of your portfolio from an active risk management perspective. Make Jamie your first call for a second opinion. Investment advisory services are offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.
Hey, Tallahassee, it's Sarah with Seminole Auto Glass. You're probably driving right now, which means you're surrounded by glass. Did you know that each piece is made differently? Your windshield is two sheets of glass with a thin plastic in between. This allows it to take an impact without going all the way through. Side and back glasses are typically tempered. This strengthening process is what allows them to be shattered in the event of an emergency. Regardless of the glass or how it breaks, we can help. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass, proudly serving the Big Ben for over 15 years. Better call Seminole. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. You know, I think a hug is warranted. Especially I, if you're afraid. a stranger. <laughs> Well, that almost happened. That's where I'm going. I actually, I oh, almost sorry. No, 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 no. No, it's okay. Screw me. No, no. But let me explain why. It's gonna. It's kind of funny. I actually felt compelled. It almost happened. But yeah, if I know you and think think you to be a, a decent lad, I I give you a hug. You get that from your dad. Yeah, we're huggers in the Cameron family. Okay, my kids, my boys, we hug all the time. I'm forever hugging Bryce and Cole. They've got great hugs. They do. They, they're already quite good at it. Oh, I hug. I'm always hugging them. They get tired. Dad, good lord. I, they have to hug me every morning before they leave for school, and they hug me every night, or I hug them in their beds before they go to sleep. And then there's all kinds of hugs in between when we see each other. So it's just a it's just a hug fest. I'm forever hugging. But it's funny because my youngest loves my hugs, and he mm-hmm. does, he doesn't ever want it to stop. He'll just come over and be like, Daddy, and he wants me to hug him the whole time. It almost gets annoying. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bryce is getting to that age where it's like, all right. Dad, I am not Tim Tebow, and you are not Gary Danielson. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> but. Today, I had to go to a certain uh, pet store to pick up some crickets for our bearded dragon that Bryce has, Major Tom. And so we were going to, I was going, uh, before going out of town tomorrow, I was going over there to pick up the, it's, it's paramount time, you got to have crickets for the uh, bearded dragon. How is the bearded dragon? He's doing good. He's getting big and he's friendly as all get out. I like him. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. They're super friendly. They're really friendly. He's yeah. sitting on my shoulder. I walk the neighborhood with him sometimes. He just sits on my shoulder. Yeah, I do. I, I, it's true. If it's really warm and sunny out, because well, they, they love, love, they that, love yeah. that, I'll put him on my shoulder, and we'll go for a long walk, and he doesn't move. He'll just sit there the whole time. Yeah, it's wild. My uh, oldest niece got a bearded dragon. They yeah. get one when they're 10. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, this thing is loving as oh, hell. Oh, they're friendly as can be. Right. You're thinking it's going to, you know, kind of bite you or something. Yeah. Slither around. No, and kinda, no, 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 no. It's no, chill. I love him. And uh, I didn't think I would. Bryce had wanted that thing forever, so I finally, it was his birthday. I guess, yeah, that was a year ago. It was his birthday, and I went, oh, all right, well, I'll, I'll do it. I'm so, You know me. Sucker. Wasn't cheap. I had to get the terrarium and all the mm-hmm. other stuff to go with it and oh, all yeah. that nonsense. And, I, and I'm not fooling around. I'm not getting you some tiny-ass terrarium. We're going where you have a living space that I feel like you're comfortable in. So I went and got this Mac Daddy. Yeah. No hostel here. No, this is a nice place. That thing, you, I could fit in this thing's terrarium. But anyhow, so he's got a nice terrarium. He's got a good setup. And then you have to get the accoutrements and all that. And then, of course, I get the lamps. And so it's, you know, it's good. But I went to get these crickets, and I walk in today to get them. And I've become a pro with crickets, too, by the way. I can handle the I've actually grown to like the crickets. Oh, so this is uh... Dumb as a post, these crickets. Yeah. They, they drown themselves. They drown themselves. They don't understand that they can't go in the water. So you have to get this other kind of water that's more like gel that allows them to hydrate themselves so that they don't drown themselves. Yeah. That's how damn dumb crickets are. But you've liked the crickets. So you, I, okay, so I like the so crickets. So you don't like the feeding process. That bugs you? Oh, no, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't care if they get eaten. They're crickets. They're idiots. But I'm saying, I mean, literally, they're mindless things. They're, it's, and they, that's, you know, it's the whole thing with insects. It's about producing reproducing in mass because you ain't going to be getting by on stealth <laughs> it's 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 about quantity so <laughs> i'm serious they they kill themselves all the time doing dumb stuff which actually makes me chuckle and makes them somewhat endearing i'm like oh look at this cricket he hung himself over here look at that 
He didn't know what he was doing. He got involved in the trees over here. And he, <laughs> they'll be turned sideways. It's just dumb. They're dumb. So I went to go buy these crickets. Uh, and, <laughs> and this lady looks so beleaguered. You ever just catch somebody? It was early this morning where it's the wrong time of day. I don't, I don't mean like life altering bad news or she probably wouldn't have been shopping at the store, but she looked like she'd had a rough go the night before and she looked a little lost and she had this giant cup of coffee, which I really appreciated, Mm -hmm. but I could tell she needed that giant cup of coffee. Message received. Oh yeah. I saw the whole thing. It was written like a map man. It was all over her face. And she just looked frustrated, and it had already been a tough day, and she hadn't been able to wolf down enough coffee, and she was tired. I don't think she slept well last night. She was on a, an errand that she didn't want to be on, and she was a little confused as to what she needed to be purchasing, and perhaps her husband was a jerk. Something was happening. I could see it. It was all right there. And she looked at me, beleaguered as she was, and I, wanted, I stopped, and she looked at me, and I looked at her. She was a little older. And she, she just had that, that look, and I go, I, I go, good morning, ma'am. And oh, so you're rubbing it in. No, 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 no. I was trying to snap her out of it. Mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, good morning. And she was, like, excited that somebody said hello. Yep. And I go, how are you? And she goes, oh, I'm, I can't complain. And I go, okay. And I was about to hug her. It would have been very weird. Yeah. Admittedly. Yeah. But I was disarming. It wasn't, you know, I don't think it would have been thought of in a creepy manner. Or, sure. You know, I, but I was just going to be like, well, all right. And give her kind of like a, like a bro hug. Just kind of like a, you know, pat on the back. But instead, I just kind of patted her shoulder. I go, all right. Well, you have a good day. And she goes, well, thank you. And she smiled and she moved on. There you go. And then I went and got my crickets. And that was the end of it. Impacting lives. Not just on these airways. That's right. That's right. We do everything we can, even in the hallways of uh, pet stores in the early morning hours. This happened to me a couple of weeks ago, something very similar. You almost hugged somebody? No, I didn't almost hug somebody, but just saying good morning and being attentive and somebody flips. Yeah, it's the best. It works. It actually does does. work. It does work. So I was getting uh, my hair. They're in their own stuff, man. Right. They're up here. They're domed. Well, and and I saw this. I could see it from a mile away. So I was getting my hair cut. Uh, I won't tell you where, but, you know, this person was done with the guy before me. And you could tell this guy... He was not nice. Yeah, you know, he, he was, was indifferent. He was either indifferent or not nice or a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. So the experience of going to the register and getting You're everything cleared up. stuff in a service industry can be tough. I'm detecting there's, there's mm-hmm. tension here between you know, two. the service provider and the customer. That's right. He didn't appreciate the work being done. And the long look on the face, beleaguered, oh, same man. kind of thing. It's the worst. It's the worst. And so my name is called. I say hello. And, and they say, well, how are you? I said, uh, 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 well, excuse me. I'll re- rephrase that. She said, "You're on share this one." I said, "Well, how are you today? You doing all right?" Oh, there it is. And it was just like a light bulb. You pull the string. I've got a civil kind oh, well, soul. Hey. And we're laughing and chuckling on the way out to the register when there I'm done. There it so, is, like that. So the guy after me, you got a better haircut because of me, pal. You're welcome. And more importantly, you cheered her up and gave her a renewed faith in humanity. Probably. One that was temporarily shaken by this ass's behavior. We talked music. It was great. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Usually usually you can find something, just a little something in there. That Now, not always. There have been those disastrous efforts of mine in the past where I thought I could bring something out and it's not. It's just not going to happen. It doubles down. Yeah, and but, you're like, oh, okay, so you, you can't be bothered with being you know, reasonably uh, kind? Okay. Your conscience was clear, though, wasn't it? At that point, well, I can't help you. Yeah, I did my part. I did what I could. And it was. And here's the thing. I get it, man. Everybody's going through their own thing. I, I don't pretend to know what everybody's going through. I get it. There are days that I'm in inward, withdrawn, whatever that might be. Uh, and, and sometimes you just want to be thinking about other things. But this one, I could tell she needed just a little. And I think she would have let me give her a hug. And I don't mean it again. I don't mean it in a creepy way. But I could have given her a hug and been like, all right. And she would have been like, okay. Isn't it the worst when you're with somebody who does the opposite? They're bringing somebody down, mm. and they're not even, it's not even personal. Mm-hmm. They're just, their attitude brings somebody else down. I, I got no time for that. Like uh, an example in the service industry. Uh, we were somewhere, and uh, this waitress asked somebody we know, uh, what did you, uh, what was the, again, that you wanted with this particular order? What did I say? Yes, well, I remember that. And I'm, yeah, I'm at the table. You're at the table. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Well, what do you, I like, mean, why would you do that? Well, now we're all going to get treated like a-holes, yeah. and our food may be messed with across the board. And really, why is why? there ever a reason to do that? No, 
no. This is a small detail. No, no, now, man. If you say it twice and the order comes out different, that's one thing. But uh, let's go easy here. Yeah, yeah. What? A, <laughs> hey, I was a waiter. Right. I've done waiting. Yes. I, I was a bar back. I, you I know, was a bar back, and I did some waiting for a specific table because they hated the waitresses. It can be a tough go. Yeah. It can be a tough go. I mean, you are being a waiter or a bar back. I mean, it's, <laughs> what did I say? Yeah. What do we do Come here? Come on, man. Anyhow, I don't know if that lady's a listener or not, but I hope her day was brightened just by a simple good morning. And I got my crickets, and the lady was delightful, and I went home, and I fed the bearded dragon, and I came into work, Tom. That's how my morning went. That's a... That's a good morning. Well, she called her her husband and she said, "You know, not everybody's a miserable son of a <laughs> like you." <laughs>